This video is a simple winter landscape. You can trace the outline page or draw this onto your watercolor paper. Just be sure to draw the foreground on the bottom third of the paper, not in the middle. I'm going to start this painting with the background sky and trees. Mix a puddle of yellow, transparent orange, and dioxazine purple. Before you start, Use masking tape to save the edges of the barn and the top of the field. You may want to test the masking tape on your paper to make sure it won't tear when you pull it up. For the sky, use any kind of soft wash brush to wet the paper. Start with yellow in the upper right corner. And then, without rinsing your brush, pick up some of the orange and paint the rest of the sky. Don't worry about painting around the trees. They're going to be darker than the sky. The yellow and the orange should mix together on the paper. But if they don't, you can do a few brush strokes to blend them. Just don't over brush. While the sky is still wet, mix your orange and purple into a rich brown for the trees. You notice I switched to a smaller brush since this is a smaller area. Start at the bottom of the trees and work up. If your paint spreads too much, just wait a few minutes and let it dry a bit. You want the top of the trees lighter and more orange and the bottom area darker. My trees got a little wild at the edges, so I tilted the top of my paper up and rubbed those edges with a clean, damp brush. Next, use a scraper, anything with a hard edge, and scratch a few bare trees into the tree mass and maybe one or two sticking out from the edges. My sky is still damp and I'm going to paint the bigger trees on the left with these same colors. But I'm going to use more color and try for more variety.
See the nice edges you get when you paint wet on damp? Now it's time to dry the sky and trees. If yours dries too light, dry it completely, re-wet, and do more washes. I hold my breath while I take off the tape, and it worked well. For the foreground, first I'm going to put on a wash of a grayed down blue. My blue mix for snow is cerulean blue plus ultramarine blue. I wet the foreground with clean water. I want the bluish color to be the darkest around the sides and bottom edges, getting lighter as it goes up. I want to leave the top, especially around the red barn, pure white. I start with the dark edges and work up to the lighter area. If your painting is too light, keep adding color to the bottom and sides and working it up until you're happy with it. And then dry it well. For the bushes in front of the barn, I've painted over some of them. If that happens to you, you can re-wet the dark area with a damp brush that reactivates the paint and then dab it up with a paper towel. I start the bushes with orange and yellow. more yellow as I get near the red barn. Then I add some of my leftover browns to darken the left side and bottom. For the corn stubble, I used some leftover paint, just a medium brown. I do a few jagged lines and then a few vertical stalks. Once I get it all down, I add a few darker areas here and there. Now the red barn isn't going to be a bright red. I want an orangey red. Uh, that would be like a pyrrole red. And I'm mixing that with some of my tree color. Paint that little barn darker on the top and lighter or more orange towards the bottom.
and then put a thin line of very dark tree color at the top of the barn. If you want wood lines, you can scratch in a few, but don't scratch in too many and don't make them go all the way across. Dry that well. You can use opaque white to clean up the edges of the barn roof, add icicles, or clean up anything on your snow. I decided to put a tiny bit of red showing on the side of the barn, along with the darker shadows under the roof edge. You can add white to a few of the bare trees on the right, or to some of the cornstalk stubble. There's a lot of things you could add to this painting. You could add shadows or highlights to the field, darker clouds to the sky, or you could lift out some lighter cloud areas. You could add a sun or moon by painting one on or using a stencil to lift one off. I decided to add falling snow by spattering on some white. And here's our finished picture. This is a very simple exercise, but it would give you good practice in working wet on damp. I hope yours turns out great. Visit my website soon. I have a new one coming in 2023 and all the lessons will be free. Happy painting.